Now we have 22 million people out of work and millions of business owners are facing insolvency. So how many of our fellow Americans are feeling stressed and panicked like the women you just saw? Joining me now is Dr. Phil McGraw, psychologist, author, and host of Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, thanks so much for being on with us. Um, I think this this isn't part of the calculation um, of you know the, the bending the curve and all of those graphs that we see, and they're they're very interesting. I'm not saying they're not important, but those comments aren't taken into consideration when we look at those graphs. Well, Laura, they never are, and thank you for having me on, and thank you for giving a voice to this because it's so very important. This is invisible. I can't show you an X-ray of depression. I can't show you an x-ray of anxiety, but the fact of the matter is, the longer this lockdown goes on, the more vulnerable people get. And it's like there's a tipping point. There's a point at which people start having enough problems in lockdown that it will actually create more destruction and actually more death across time than the actual virus will itself. 250 people a year die from poverty. And the poverty line is getting such that more and more people are gonna fall below that because the economy is crashing around us. And they're doing that because people are dying from the coronavirus, I get that. But look, the fact of the matter is, we have people dying, 45,000 people a year die from automobile accidents, 480,000 from cigarettes, 360,000 a year from swimming pools, but we don't shut the country down for that. But yet we're doing it for this, and the fallout is going to last for years because people's lives are being destroyed. And Dr. Phil, just conversations with, with business owners who I've gotten to know over the years. Um, I, I come from a family that owned a small business, a car wash, and so I'm always, I'm always, my heart is always with the people who get, you know, frankly screwed, I hate that word, screwed in situations like this. But it, 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 the restaurateurs, who, their, their employees are their families. They're, that's their family. And they, they've had the, the same employees for 30 mm -hmm. years. And these are grown men in tears. And, and they're like, I, 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 I can't sleep, I can't. And these are, these are grown men who, I, and I've never seen this. I've never witnessed this before. Ever. Well, I've talked to them before, and of course, this happened, and when it happened, they got no warning. Some of them had just received huge orders of perishable foods. They didn't even have time to give it away, and they have these, these, these people that have worked for them for 20 or 30 years, and they can't afford to keep them on, and they can't do takeout at a lot of these restaurants. They're not geared for that. And so people are just at home. And of course, it's a perfect storm, or because here you've got people that are in isolation, that creates problems. Loneliness actually creates problems. People that suffer from loneliness, they mm. become 29% more likely to have coronary artery disease, 32% more likely to have strokes or die, 40% more likely to have dementia if they're in that age group. So it's not just that it's psychological, their bodies actually start breaking down. So we think we're protecting people's lives by keeping them locked up. You keep them locked up long enough, there's a paradoxical effect. You actually destroy more lives than you do by letting them go out and protect themselves and opt into their lives to fight for what they believe in. Yeah, and Dr. Phil, I couldn't, I could not agree more. I've been, I mean, I, I, I have not slept during this just because I'm so worried about our country. I'm blessed because I, I have a job and I'm very blessed, but I'm, I'm so worried about the working people in our country and the impact of being out of school for children. And there hasn't been that much of a focus on that. Um, Sweden kept their primary school kids in. Uh, they thought that was the right thing to do. And you know, we'll see how the numbers all turn out there. But the risk that this poses to children, watch. They could just be totally blowing off school, not talking to anyone and just you know, numbing out on YouTube videos all day long because they're anxious and worried and depressed and they're trying to distract themselves. And no one would know because they're not going to reach out for help. Dr. Phil, how can parents make sure this doesn't happen to their kids where it's veg out well, that's, that, that's a real problem, Lord. I'm glad you brought it up because attendance and actual completion of work across the country has dropped about 40%. Parents are not trained as teachers. I mean, we've got, we've got so many parents where they have 
three or four children in three or four different grades and they have one device, one laptop or computer at home, if that, and they're trying to run three or four curricula when they don't have the training to do it once. And so that's a real problem. And they're doing it while they've got this hammer hanging over their head that the economy's crashing around their ears. They don't know they're gonna be able to pay their rent. There were 10,000 people that showed up in San Antonio over the weekend for the food bank. People that used to be volunteering at the food bank are now in line getting food at the food bank. No. 10,000 people. And we these are people that don't want to be there. They don't no. need to be there. No, no. Now, we, we have so many questions. Our viewers, Dr. Phil, have been sending in questions all day long. When we come back, we're going to get to those questions from all of you. Stay tuned. More Dr. Phil up next.